And in our uh, web series, we talked about uh, what would happen if you just arbitrarily changed the the undefined terms of geometry. Uh, and so we, moving on to the next section, we have a geometry that's a little bit more substantial than the three-point and the four-line and the four-point geometry. It's called Fano's geometry. And the axioms for Fano's geometry are, uh, number one, there exists at least one line. And number two, every line of the geometry has exactly three points on it. Number three, not all points in the geometry are on the same line. Number four, each two distinct points, uh, for each two distinct points, there exists exactly one line on both of them. And number five, each two lines have at least one point on both of them. Now, normally what we do in a, um, in a discussion like this is we try to draw a model right away. Uh, and for Fano's geometry, that would be uh, rather difficult. Um, there are a lot of different ways uh, that one could go with this. So what we're actually going to do first is uh, prove one theorem. Um, we notice that axioms 4 and 5 actually give us a stronger result than just axiom 5. So we're going to prove that first, and then we're going to use that theorem to develop our model. So first, let's uh, prove theorem 1.7. Each two distinct lines have exactly one point in common. So notice that uh, Axiom 5 said that each two lines have at least one point in common, uh, and theorem 1. Point says that theorem 1.7 says that there's exactly one. So if we suppose that there are that we have any two lines in Fano's geometry, L1 and L2, Axiom 5 says that there's at least one point in both of them, uh, and if points P and P prime are on both L1 and L2, then uh, we violate Axiom 4 because axiom 4 says that for each two distinct points there exists exactly one line on both of them. So a fair question at this point might be, well why don't we just make that axiom 5? Why did we state the weaker version in axiom 5? Uh, and there is a sort of an aesthetic to making the weakest assumptions possible. Uh, so even though we could have made this axiom 5, in fact this follows from a slightly weaker assumption and uh, aesthetically uh, in mathematics the weaker the assumptions you can use to to arrive at the same result the better. Now that we have this uh, result in hand we're going to try to build ourselves a model. So recall that the very first axiom said that there exists at least one line in the model and Axiom 2 said that each line has exactly three points. Well, if we already have one line, then we had better have three points uh, on those two lines. Now, the third axiom goes on to say that there not all the points are on the same line. Uh, so, uh, apart from these three points, there must be another one. There must be a point P4. Now, <clears throat> since uh, axiom 4 says that between any two points there must uh, be a line connecting those two points. Um, there has to be a line that connects P1 and P4. And there has to be a line that connects P2 and P4. And there has to be a line that connects P3 and P4. So uh, given that the one line that we had already drawn does not, does not satisfy this property, we have to draw three more lines. Now notice that the line between P1 and P4 can't also contain P2 or P3 because otherwise then we would have two lines containing more than one point which we just proved in theorem 1.7 uh, can't be the case. So since each of these lines has to have exactly three points on it uh, and those the, the third points on any of these can't be any of the points already shown uh, there must be three more points, P5, P6, and P7. So at this point, we have, we have proved that there are at least seven points in the geometry. And now, uh, one must wonder whether or not we would need to go any further than this. So, uh, as it stands, we don't have a model for, uh, for Fano's geometry because there are points, for instance, that don't have lines that connect them. P5 and P6, for instance, don't have a line connecting them, so let's figure out 
uh, how we can draw a line in this geometry so that there's a line that contains P5 and P6. Now, there are a lot of different places we might conceivably go with this, but notice that uh, if a line contains P5 and P6, then it won't have intercepted with the line that contains P4, P7, and P3, and it won't have intercepted with the line P1, P that contains P1, P2, and P3. Now, since this new line must intersect with all of the other lines in the geometry, uh, this really only leaves P3 as a candidate. This line that contains P5 and P6, it must, it must contain P3. So we draw that line in. And we're going to continue with that, with that same line of argument. P6 and P7 currently don't have a line that contains both of them. And uh, for the axioms of Fano's geometry to hold, there must be one. And by the same sort of argument, this line must intersect with all of the other lines. Uh, right now it intersects with a line that contains P3, P7, and P4. And it intersects the line P3, P6, and P5. And it intersects with a line P2, P6, P4. So the only other point that we have available that would make it intersect with the line at the bottom and the line on the on the left is P1. So we can draw a line in there. Now again, we have we have points in this geometry that don't have lines that connect the two. Uh, P5 and P2 have no lines that connect the, one another. Similarly, P5 and P7 don't, and P2 and P7 do not. And in fact, those are the only three that are left, and it just so happens we can put one line on top of all three of those. So you'll notice that if you look at uh, the axioms, we have there exists at least one line. Uh, there are three points on every single line. Uh, not every point is on the same line. I just said those axioms out of order. Um, each pair of points has a line that connects them, and each pair of lines it lie on at least one point. And of course, theorem 1.7 still holds because if the axioms hold, then the theorem will hold that each pair of lines uh, overlap in exactly one point. So now in that uh, construction. I mentioned earlier that we we had then shown that there are at least seven points in Fano's geometry. And this also shows that there are seven lines in Fano's geometry because we didn't add a line unless one was absolutely necessary. So this is giving us a lower bound on the number of lines in Fano's geometry. So uh, in our usual way, we're going to show that there are exactly seven points in Fano's geometry and exactly seven lines in Fano's geometry by assuming that there is an eighth point or an eighth line and then showing that that leads us to a contradiction. So we're going to prove that Fano's geometry has exactly seven points. Now in, the, in our construction we showed that there are at least seven points, uh, P1 through P7, and all along the way we only added points when we absolutely had to so our construction shows that there are at least seven points now suppose there's an eighth point p8 by axiom four there must be a line that connects p8 and really any one of the points in geometry but let's just pick p1 then since that line must intersect with the line on the upper right hand upper right uh, that contains p3 p7 and p4 and that line contains no other points, then it follows that L must contain either P3, P7, or P4. This contradicts axiom 4 because now we have two lines that contain P1 and either P3 or P7 or P4. Because an eighth point produces a contradiction for us, uh, it must follow that there is no eighth point. So. Fano's geometry must have exactly seven points because we've shown that it has at least seven points and having more than seven is an impossibility. And we're going to take a similar approach in proving the other part of theorem 1.8 and that is that Fano's geometry has exactly seven lines. So again, our construction showed that at least seven lines are necessary for the axioms of Fano's geometry to hold. So suppose we had another line. 
a line L that was not among the seven we've established. By axiom four, each two distinct points must have exactly one line on both of them, so L can contain at most one of these seven points. So by axiom two, since L contains three points, uh, L must have at least, well, must have, yeah, must have at least two points that are not among the original seven. However, that means that our geometry has at least nine points. But we've just proved uh, in the on the previous slide that there are exactly seven points in our geometry, so this is a contradiction. So. Fano's geometry has at least seven lines uh, and can have no more. Therefore, Fano's geometry has exactly seven lines.